Let's look at an example of an LCR circuit. This is called a Colpitts oscillator. And for an oscillator, we, we really want to be able to overcome the resistance. So there are resistances in the inductor and these capacitors that we could model as resistance in line. And and though that doesn't really work for us because we want to have some kind of steady oscillations and so the way we get around it is by adding energy into the system constantly to be able to maintain these oscillations so the coal pits does that it it uh, starts out when you think of this transistor like a switch or an amplifier and there's a certain potential that has to be between these two leads. This is called the base. This is called the emitter. There's a certain amount of voltage that needs to be across these two leads to be able to get this transistor to conduct. And it amplifies and gives us basically not exactly, but close enough, gives us a potential that's equal to some amplification times VCE or VBE. So when you first start up the circuit, current is going to flow through this 100 ohm resistor, R2 it can't flow through the transistor because it's not doing anything there's not any potential across these two leads so the current's going to skip over and go through resistor R1 and I have it set as a variable resistor and I'll explain why here in a minute and then it starts to charge up this capacitor C2 and goes through the inductor L1 and starts to charge up capacitor C2 these charges come together and go towards ground now as these capacitors charge up there's a potential that starts to be put across the transistor and these two leads, the base and the emitter, and this transistor starts to conduct. And so the oscillations start in the inductor and the capacitors. But it's not going to last forever. It's going to start bleeding off energy because of the resistance, because of the transistor has resistance. So this current continually gets supplied because when the transistor starts to turn off because there's not enough potential then the, you've got this current that's going to start to charge up these induct this inductor and these capacitors and this cycle continues so the transistor is used to overcome the resistance and it's nice because it offsets the resistance and makes it very simple to calculate the value of the oscillating frequency of the coal pits. So the uh, we know that for an oscillator it's 1 over LC to get the oscillations for omega, the value of omega, and frequency is just 1 over 2 pi times square root 1 over LC. And so this capacitance is not just one or the other of these capacitances, it's this capacitance in series. So our total capacitance is going to equal C1, C2 divided by C1 plus C2 and the inductance, there's just this one inductor and now we just put in 
our total capacitance into these formulas and we can calculate the frequency. So the coal pits was used for many years in radios because it's very stable and all you had to do was change either the inductance or the capacitance to change the frequency. This variable resistor is changed only to control the oscillations. Uh, there, if the resistance is too high here, it can't get enough current for the oscillations. And if it's too low, then the oscillations just start going out of control because this transistor is an amplifier. So it's very important that this value of resistance is set correctly for the oscillations to be maintained. But this was this is a good example of an LCR circuit with the ability to overcome the resistance to get close to pure oscillations.